In this video I'm going to uh, introduce some things about the PIC16F84A specifically. I'm going to run through uh, a sample, very very minimal file here. We're going to have a look at the data sheet because I think that's invaluable, or it certainly was to me when I was learning to use uh, assembly on the PIC16F84A. Uh, we'll also have a look at this. Um, this file I find is uh, very useful. Uh, it was particularly useful to me at the start. So. First of all, let's, let's just go back here. Um, as you can see, I'm using MP Lab X IDE Integrated Development Environment. This version that I'm using at the moment is 5.10. That's the current version at this point in time. It's likely that it won't be the current version uh, in the future. But um, anyway, I don't suppose anything would be that much different. So uh, one of the uh, things that I've done is to create a new source file. So I just went new and then created a new general source file. And um, it created um, some of this. I've uh, subsequently added some code. So I think it'd be useful just to run through this, um, some elements of this code just to explain what it does. So, uh, and also to have to find out, um, to let you know how you could find out what it does if you forget in the future. So, um, okay, the first line um, is empty. And then the second line of the code, it's got this list command here. Now, um, let's just think just for a moment about instructions and um, other commands and directives. So uh, looking at the PIC 16F84A datasheet, if I scroll on down, I will come to the table of contents here, and then there's an instruction set summary that's on page 35. Hopefully it's actually bookmark as well. Um, so that's going to be helpful to you to navigate your way around the um, PIC 16F84A datasheet. So let's just click that. And what we're going to find is that list is not an instruction. And yep, yeah, it's most definitely not in there. Now, um, it's not an instruction because it's not an instruction that's executed by the microcontroller itself. It's more about um, the assembler. So let's just go to the uh, assembly uh, language uh, reference uh, document here. Let's scroll on down, see what we can find. So. It's got an overview of the assembler, uh, expression syntax. Okay, so it's got directives here now. No doubt if we click here, we can go to directives. Let's just click that. And so there's, um, yep, they are listed there. Now you'll actually probably find that list in here somewhere. So scroll on down. There we go. So it's there. Um, if you don't want to do it that way, oops, let's just go back. I accidentally clicked on a hyperlink. So if we just go back and let's go to directives here and you'll see that there are various directives there and list uh, not surprisingly perhaps falls in the listing directives category uh, but if you if it wasn't so obvious you could just scroll on down through this so let's just have a quick look through so listing directives and there's the list directive here so if it occurs on a line by itself, this directive has the effect of turning listing output on. Well, it doesn't occur on its uh, on a line by itself because it's got this. So let's have a look down in this table. There's, it's got an option, you see. So if we look down, yep, here's the option. And yep, set processor type, for example, uh, pick 16F877. Uh, but in our case, um, we are setting the processor type to be a uh, PIC 16F 84A. Okay, so the next command, once again, that's not one of the um, instructions um, that are supported by the microcontroller. It's all about the assembler again, and it's include. So if we were to scroll on up, it's a little bit efficient, inefficient going through this way, but um, in fact, I think I might be lost. There we go. So let's just scroll on up. Go to uh, directives. Oh, there we are. Okay, and um, here we go. Include. So include. It, I mean, it's a bit of a giveaway here. It includes an additional source file. So there we are. And it's uh, this is really useful actually. I, I think because when I first started looking at example code, I wasn't sure whether I was supposed to write include and then these angle brackets or single quotes, double quotes, or whatever. Now, if you look at this, three different um, syntaxes are allowed. Um, well, in fact, six are. Uh, these are the preferred ones. 
uh, these are also supported. So the effect of this line is that it's going to include a header file. So later on, let me just give you a flavor of what we might do later on. So if I did something like um, bcf, which is bit uh, clear file, um, then what I could then do is a bit clear file. And then what do I want to clear? So maybe I want to clear, say, port b, rb0. Now, these, uh, you could think of these as like, um, like constants. Uh, not quite constants, but um, these, rather than remembering an address, a number, it's much more convenient to just refer to something by name. So these are defined in the include file. So we need to have a look at that because that's really useful. Now, um, if you have a look, um, uh, an include file, by the way, is, is also called a header file. Well, it's not in there because it's actually, uh, we, you know, you can write your own header files. Uh, but in this case, we're just going to use the standard P16F848 uh, include file. So let's see if we can find it. So it's going to be on uh, drive C. So let's just have a look. Uh, my uh, MPLabX uh, IDE is going to be installed in program files. At least I hope so. Uh, microchip MPLabX. Uh, there we go. Current version. Uh, and then MPSMLabX. Okay. And then it see we've got these include files here. So let's just do a search rather than scroll on scrolling on down. P sixteen F. Remember it's not PIC sixteen F, it's P sixteen F eighty four A there. Notice that is exactly the same as that. So let's just double click it. And so when you um when you include that, when you do this uh, directive, as it's called. Remember, it's not a, an instruction, it's a directive for the assembler to follow. Um, then it includes this file. So like I was saying earlier, let's uh, see if I can find it. Uh, where are we? There we go. OK, so when earlier I, ty I typed port B, if you remember, I typed in the source code there, port B, well, that equated to memory address hexadecimal 6. So rather than, I mean, I could have, if I wanted, be glutton for punishment, but I could have said bit set, I like to say capital bit set file. And then instead of saying port B, I could have said hexadecimal address 0006 like that um, for consistency let's get this right we've got three zeros there so I could have done that and then I think I said RB something that will be referring to the bit so if I look down uh, through here somewhere that RB0 will, be, will equate these are what we call equates to that so I could have typed that instead but obviously that's not really very nice, so it's much easier to use these uh, friendly constants. Um, on the subject of, say, that memory address, let's just, uh, it's, um, I'm going to whiz between different things, I think. Let's just have a look. Let's get rid of that. So if we have a look at the data sheet, so where does that memory address come from, you might be thinking. So let's go to the data sheet for pic 16 f 84 a and there will be, hopefully, you will find a memory map somewhere. Oh, by the way, uh, <laughs> I'm picking up different things as we go through here. So, um, uh, um, what was it? RB0, RB0, yeah, that is input and output. You can see that it's an input and output. Um, now, uh, you'll see then that port B is at memory address 6. So that's where that comes from. So rather than having to remember in the code that port B resides at memory address 6, uh, we can just instead just say, so long as we've included the header file, we can just say port B, which has got to be a lot easier. OK, and let's get rid of that code for a moment. So we understand, hopefully we now understand um, that we've got to use a directive to tell um, the assembler what processor we're going to use. Uh, then we also include the header file, which is going to make our lives so much easier because we can use these uh, more friendly names, these equates. Um, 
and then the next line in our code, remember those are all just comments, so they start with a leading semicolon. Uh, so here's a directive, config. Now, um, config is, I, I did this myself, I use the um, config generator, config bits generator. I'm not going to run through that in this video. Um, however, um, what does that do? Well, um, that sets a high speed oscillator. Now, um, I'm just wondering about where we're going to find that. I think, let's see if we can find it in here. So let's just do a search. Um, is that two or three? Oh, I think that's two leading underscores. So config. There we go. Set processor configuration bits. That's on page 86. Let's just type that 86. And see if we can find anything particularly interesting or useful. Uh, probably not, just for the moment. Maybe we'll come back to that later. Okay, anyway, that's the high speed oscillator. This is uh, setting the watchdog timer to be off. More about that possibly in another video. Uh, this one is turning off uh, as the uh, turning off the um, power up timer, and this one is uh, turning off code protection because I don't want any of any of those things. Um, yeah, um, for a novice, you most definitely want to turn off the uh, watchdog timer. Um, there's a load of issues if you don't. Okay, going on to the next line of the code, and notice on the next line of the code, um, this text here is uh, left aligned here. It's it's further in, whereas all of these are indented. This one starts on the left in the left hand column. The reason for that is because it's a label. Now labels must be uh, in this column. Anything that's not label will be indented. So I could have called that absolutely anything that I wanted. I could have, yeah, absolutely anything. However, um, it makes sense to call that, give that a name, something like reset vector or start vector or something like that. So why might that be? Well, uh, once again, let's just go back to the um, data sheet for the PIC 16F84A. And let's scroll on down. And somewhere there's going to be, there we go. Okay, memory organization. So this is the memory uh, map for the microcontroller. And it says that at memory address zero, that's the reset vector. So if you reset the device, the microcontroller, or you just power it up, um, then the program counter is going to be initialized to the address of zero. So then it will then uh, load the uh, instruction at uh, address zero. So uh, you know that when your code first starts up, this is going to be the first lot of code that's going to run. So you don't have to call this um, resvec, you can call it anything you like, but it seems sensible. Um, code is just saying, I'm now going to declare some code, and this is an optional argument to code, uh, but it, in this case it's not optional because we need to state that this code should be placed at the address zero. Sometimes you want, in fact often I would say you probably want to let the uh, linker uh, place it wherever it can, uh, but in this case because it's so important that we need some uh, need this code to be placed there. Uh, another thing as well is if you had say um, an interrupt, uh, if you've got interrupt code then you know that as soon as the interrupt happens program count is going to change to uh, address 4 so you actually have to set some code for your interrupt service routine at address 4. Once again, I'll leave that for another video though. Okay, now you'll probably notice that the difference between zero and four is not great. So we're not actually gonna be able to fit much code in there. So the only code that we really need is just to say, go to start. Now start is a label. You can see it's a label because it's uh, left aligned here. So go to command now, go to is um, a an instruction in the instruction set. So we're in the um, pick data sheet again now, instruction set summary. And so if you just scroll on down, you'll find go to here somewhere. It's a control operation. So there we are, it goes to an address. Well, start in itself is not an address, it's, not, it's a label, but it will be associated with the address once this um, code is 
load it into the memory. OK, now what's next? So um, another block of code um, with a label. Um, you don't have to have the label there, of course, but it's a good idea. Uh, we haven't got an address because we're going to allow the linker to place that code wherever um, it wants to, which is absolutely fine because it's not critical, the um, memory location. Um, so then we've got another label. Um, we do need that label because earlier on we said go to that. And then once again, that's left aligned here. It's not indented because it's a label. And then indented now because we've got an instruction, we've got go to dollar. Dollar just refers to the uh, current value of the program counter. And this instruction, when this instruction is executing, the program counter will be uh, pointing to this instruction. So basically, it's just going to loop to itself. So it just goes again and again. If, on the other hand, you had, and this isn't a complete program by any means, if you had something like um, bit set file uh, status, status um, rp0 as a command, as an instruction, and then if you that would execute once, and then go to would execute by, and then just call itself, call itself, call itself. But if you wanted to go the program counter minus one, you could do that. In fact, I would probably normally do it like that. Um, so then that's um, just going to go to the previous instruction in bits at file status rp0, and then does goes to this line, and then it uh, decrements or subtracts one from the program counter, and then would execute that code again. It's, it's a useless uh, bit of code there, but I'm just as an example of how you could use minus one. <clears throat> okay, um, quite a lot of stuff there. Um, hopefully some of that is useful. Um, so just, just to recap, I think it's really useful having a look in the um, include file uh, because uh, then you actually start to understand uh, what equates you have available to you so you don't have to remember addresses. Um, of course you have to, um, you do have to set the um, microcontroller type that should be in my opinion the first thing you do and then um, include the include form. Um, don't forget to set the config bits. Um, I think, I mean I always do it, but I think you will be able to use a simulator without those but when it comes to actually downloading it onto a, a PIC microcontroller, say with a PIC kit 3, uh, it's not going to run. Um, okay, um, I think I'll draw a close there. Uh, next thing, I'll uh, maybe post a video with some example code, really, really basic example code uh, showing you how we could set up inputs and outputs and, um, and um, do some outputting maybe. Okay, so that's the end of the video for the moment.